I'm Scott, and this here is Maccabee. And um, he's going to be our orientation horse for the day. Um, Maccabee was, was at Camp Baldwin last summer. Have you, yes. you guys had a chance to go to Baldwin? Uh, yeah. I you did ride him up there? Now at Baldwin, they do both hour rides, overnight rides, horsemanship merit badge rides. How many of you guys have your horsemanship merit badge? Great. Okay, and, uh, and most all these horses, m meaning all the horses you guys are going to ride today were either um, at Camp Baldwin or here last summer. How many of you guys came here to Gilbert Ranch when you were Weeblos? Any of you guys? Yeah, quite a few of you. Okay, so all the horses we're going to ride today are pretty good, easygoing, gentle horses to be around. I can vouch for all of them. I can tell you that they're really, really good to be around, but I can also tell you that um, all horses kick, all horses bite, all horses will buck. That's just a natural horse thing, okay? If one of you guys come running up to me and told me, oh, Johnny here kicked me, it wouldn't surprise me a bit, because that's what boys do. We kick, we kind of slop each other around, we play rough, right? Horses play too, and they also have a different communication than we do. So kicking, biting, bucking, that's just horse stuff. We train these guys not to do that around us, okay? <coughs> We spend lots of time with them, and we teach them just like you guys get taught at school to, um, to do things, and we teach them that way. It's a little different, but not much. Um, so, one of the most basic things that you need to know about a horse is that a horse has two sides, just like we have two sides. They have the uh, left side, the side that I'm standing on right now, and the right side. Now that's important to you guys because you're gonna do a whole bunch of things today on the left-hand side of the horse but not very many things on the right-hand side, okay? This is the side of the horse that you're gonna tighten up your cinch on here in a little bit. It's the side of the horse you're gonna get on and off your horse on today. It's also the side of the horse that you're gonna lead your horse from today. While you're working with your horse, the, the left-hand side of the horse or the side of the horse that I'm standing on right now is generally the side of the horse that you'll be working on, okay? Yeah. When we go on our big ride, are we going to be able to like, are we going to walk them for some of it too or are we riding them the whole way? Oh no, you don't. You're gonna, not going to lead your horse around while we're on the ride. But you might lead your horse around, or you will, um, two times today. Once at your break stop and once uh, when you get back here at the end of the ride. We stop at the outside gates and then we lead our horses back here to the barn. So everybody will get a chance to lead their horse today. And we'll teach you how to lead your horse in a little bit here. Okay? Okay, any questions about the left side of the horse or the right side of the horse? Why yes, do we use the left side? Because that's the side that we standardize and teach these horses to let us do most everything on. Oh. And it really has to do with the fact that horses have been with us since we've been. They really don't have any time in history where they don't know that there was a horse somewhere in the presence of man. And most men being right-handed, and um, it not mattering at all to the horse, it's easier for a, for a mounted man to carry a sword or to use a, his right hand for things if he's getting on from the left side. Because like you guys would know that a, a, a warrior would wear his sword if he was going to draw it with his right hand on his, on his left side, right? Yeah. Well, if you had your sword on the right side and you got on your horse from the left side, you'd end up sitting on your sword. So you want your sword on the same side as, as the side you're going to get on your horse on. Most men have always been right-handed. It hadn't changed any either. Okay? That's just a real truth about what you asked me. So, you get any questions about the right side of the horse or the left side of the horse? Okay, and we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the front side of the horse and the back side of the horse. Now, the front side the, or the back side of the horse is the safest side to go around to get to the other side. And that's the side that you guys are going to go around to get to the other side. And I'm going to teach you about that here in a little bit. But before I start teaching you on that, we were going to talk a little bit about some things to pay attention to and watch out for up here on the front side of the horse. I'm going to use you guys to help me, so you need to start thinking. <coughs> There's four things we want to talk about, about up here that you want to pay attention to and watch out for when you're on the front side of the horse. What might one of those be? Just raise your hand if you got an idea. So, yes. The mouth. Yeah, horse may be biting you or nipping you. Okay, fortunately for us, horses don't bite or nip to be mean or aggressive once they've been trained a little bit. But they will bite or nip to tell you that something you're doing is irritating them so much that they can't stand it anymore. 
Horses are like 80% body language communicators. They never lie and they will always tell you what they're thinking before they do anything about it. So if you learn a little bit about paying attention to your horse, you'll know a little bit about what he's thinking and what he's doing. If I'm, if I'm, uh, I'm going to teach you a little bit about horse communication before we get going. If a horse, if I'm doing something to my horse, and I'm probably, that's probably one of the things, is I'm tightening his cinch up and I tighten him too tight, or I'm cleaning his mane and tail out or something like that, and he starts acting like <coughs> he's going to bite or nip me, which means he's going to swing his head over this way. He might even open his lips kind of up a little bit before he ever reaches over to take a chunk out of me. They'll usually always do that. They'll act a little bit irritated, which would mean they'd point their ears back like that. That kind of looks mean or mad, don't it? That's what that is. That's a body language sign for I'm mean or mad, okay? And he will tell you before he reaches over here and tries to, tries to nip at you or anything like that. They will also tell you a lot of other things. Let's say we're riding along down the trail and all of a sudden your horse stops. He picks his head up a little bit like that and his ears go forward like that. What do you think he's doing? <coughs> he's listening or what else? <coughs> Looking. He might be looking over there. That's why his head came up. That's why his ears went forward. He saw something out there move, and then he's checking it out. You might look. It might be like a deer, an elk, or a bear. It might be just a leaf hanging in a tree that wiggled funny. But he's trying to tell you something. He's saying, hey, there's something out there. We better pay attention to it. <coughs> what if you're working with your horse, and you're trying to teach him something, and you notice that his ears are doing this a little bit? What do you think the body language for that would be? Well, you guys always say confused, but what's the other thing about conf what happens when you're confused? No, no, no. What are you doing when you're confused? You're thinking. That's right. That's a thinking look. You could say confused, but that's a negative of thinking. And that's what he's doing. He's trying to figure something out. His ears are doing that a little bit. <coughs> you already know like that one is. See, he looks like a dragon. He's irritated and angry. He don't like that. What about this? I walk out maybe in the pasture and I see a horse standing off by himself and his head's down like that and his ears are flopped off to the side like that and he's just standing there still. What would that be? Depression. Could be depressed. Could be what else? Sad, Sad sick. Tired. Those are all signs of that. Tired, taking a nap. <coughs> Very good. Those are all body languages horses, horses exhibit. Okay? <coughs> There's a lot more of those. But that's a little list for you guys to kind of think about today while we're off riding. Okay? Any questions about nipping or biting? Nope. What's another adverse thing that might happen to you if you're not paying attention up here on the front side of your horse? Kick. Yeah, a horse can kick you. Just if a horse wants to kick you, he don't care if he kicks you with his front legs or his back legs. But fortunately for us, kicking with the front legs is an extremely disobedient thing for a horse to do. You don't really, you don't have to worry about that at all while you're out here riding. But if you have a great time riding out here this weekend and you know some, maybe a, a family member has a horse or a neighbor has a horse or you're somewhere where somebody has a horse that you get a chance to ride. Horses that are untrained, spoiled, or disobedient, those kind of horses quite often will kick with their front legs. <coughs> I can vouch for these horses. They're not going to kick you with their front legs. But it is something you want to watch out for. That's a great reason for not standing up here in this area of a horse that's a 45 degree angle off my horse's front shoulders all the way to that other side. Because where I'm standing right now, my horse can't kick me with his front, front legs. I'm in a safe place for that. He could still reach up and kick me with his back leg if he wanted to, but I don't have to worry about him kicking with his front feet if I'm standing in this area right here where I'm at. This is a really great safe area right off my horse's front shoulder area right here for me to stand. Okay, that's a good place for you guys to get to know your horse, work on your horse, tighten up your cinch, adjust your stirrups on, is right here where I'm standing right now. Okay, any questions about kicking with their front? Yes, sir? Will they step on you or start to side move and push you around? In a that's, the, that's one of the four things that we, that we have to talk about. Now, there's one more you guys got to talk about, so you guys be thinking. There's one more that we have to get. But the, the one of the other ones, one of the other four, is a horse stepping on your feet with their feet. Okay, and uh, you guys today when you're out riding, I encourage you to pay attention to the horses in front of you that you can see. Horses are amazing. 
They know where their feet are all the time. You know, we walk down the trail and we'll stumble over rocks or trip over a branch or something. Horses very rarely, if you're riding them correctly, trip or stumble. And you'll see they'll step all four feet over a log, around a rock, anything like that. They know where their feet are all the time. <coughs> but they don't necessarily care where their feet are. And they're just as happy standing on your feet as they are standing on their own. So it's your responsibility to keep your feet out from underneath your horse's feet. And the way you do that <coughs> is by making sure that you know where he is all the time. Now, the whole time I've been up here, I've made sure that I was setting a good example for you guys by knowing where my horse was. And I've done that by having contact with him. Okay? At all times that I've been up here, I've had contact with my horse. <coughs> that could have very well been physical contact. I've been touching him, touching a piece of his tack, or leaning against him, physical contact. If I feel him move towards me, I can move away from him. If I feel him move away from me, I can move towards him, okay? <coughs> if I haven't been using physical contact with him, I've used visual contact. Right here where I'm standing, if I'm paying attention to both you guys and him, if he moves, if he does any movement at all, I have visual contact and I know what he's doing. I can see him here and here. Okay, and same thing, if he moves towards me, I'm gonna move away. If he moves away from me where I can't see him, I'm gonna move towards him. Even if I don't have visual contact with him, I'm still gonna make sure I'm paying attention at all times and I'm listening to him. Okay, and now this isn't important just for him. It's also important for these horses way down here. Let's say I'm standing here by this horse talking to you guys and I hear a big old ruckus down that way. I'm gonna pay attention to that because that ruckus could work its way all the way up here to me. Okay, I'm gonna use that to adjust to the situation. And if he gets freaked out, I'm gonna move on out of the way. And I'm just gonna keep my feet out from underneath his feet. So any questions about that? Yes, sir? Will they swing <coughs> right at you? <coughs> Are you trying to go on to the next one that you guys don't have yet you and say have... headbutt? The headbutt? Is that what you're saying? I was asking for like, would they swing their head at you? Not when they're stepping on you. Do you have any, guys have any questions about a horse stepping on your feet with their feet? No. Okay, very good. Just keep your feet out from underneath your horse's feet and that'll be perfect. But let's go back to what he just said because he did just get the fourth one, the last one we had to talk about. And that is kind of sometimes people will say a horse hitting you with their head. Sometimes they say, kids will say head button or whatever. Now, this is a great reason for not going around the front side of your horse. There's two hard parts of the horse, their head and their feet. Don't let their head hit your head and don't let their feet step on your feet. That's a good reason for not going around here. If you go around the front of this horse and you get hung up in this reins or this lead rope or this halter and you startle your horse, scare your horse or make him think something bad's going to happen to him, your horse has every right to try to save himself from danger just like you have every right to try to save yourself from something dangerous. <coughs> a horse's first line of defense is to flee or run away from danger. It's called the flight response. So if he gets scared, his first thing he's going to do is run away. And if he tries to run away and I'm right here, he's going to hit me with his head, his neck, his front shoulders, knock me down, and trample over me. Okay? The safest place for me to be when I'm up around my horse is right here by this shoulder. Because right here, if something happens, he can go like that. And I'm not going to go under the front of my horse like that. I'm going to stay back here. I'm going to go around the back of my horse. Any questions about head button? Okay. <clears throat> well, you guys, I've already told you the safest side to go around to get to the other side of the horse is the back side of the horse. That's the side of the horse you guys are going to go around to get to the other side. And I'll also tell you that we all know that is the kicking end, the business end, the end we want to watch out for. If you've ever been around horses with your mom, they always say, don't go around the back side of your horse, honey, you're going to get kicked. Could be true, but not necessarily. You guys don't have to worry about being kicked out here at Butte Creek when you're walking around the back side of the horse properly. Okay? I don't remember the last time anybody was kicked walking around properly around the back side of the horse here, but I'm going to teach you what properly is. There's three things you want to do when you walk around the back side of your horse. The very first thing is you want to be nice and close to your horse. The closer I am to him, the safer I am. If he kicks right now, his feet are way down by my feet, he's not going to get any momentum built up, and I'm going to have a chance to get out of the way. Okay, if I'm too scared to get up there close and I'm standing way back here and he kicks, his feet are going to be all the way up to my hip or my ribs or my shoulder or maybe even my head. 
The closer you are, the safer you are. So get right up here nice and close. Yes, sir. Would it be better to walk by and touch every horse you go you go through, or would that startle them and therefore kick them? No, you won't startle them. They know you're going to be back there. Okay. You guys don't need to be scared about this or startled about this. You just need to do this like I'm going to show you, okay? So step number one is be nice and close to your horse. Step number two is to put your hand up here on your horse's rump. This does two things for me. The very first thing it does for me is it lets me know I'm pretty close to my horse because if my hand's up here on my horse's rump, I can feel my horse with my fingers, with my arm, underneath my arm, with my ribs, and even my legs touching his leg. I know I'm pretty close to my horse. If all I can feel is the end of his tail because I'm too scared to get up there, I'm not close enough. Get right up here like that. The second thing number two does for me is it lets my horse know something's back here. <coughs> as soon as I walk up here by my horse and put my hand right up here, he's like, oh man, something's going on. Okay? I shouldn't be pulling no shenanigans. Third thing you want to do when you're walking around the horse, and this is mostly for you, is you want to let your horse know that, that you're back here. Okay? You want to talk to your horse. All these horses, every single one of them is, has, has permission to kick at other horses when they're over there on the other side of the fence, over there being horses. But we want them to know that you're a person and not another horse. So when you walk up to them, go like, well, horse, easy horse, please don't kick me, horse. Something like that. What, do they kick each other? <coughs> What's that? They kick each other? Absolutely. Okay, so if I was going to walk around my horse, I'd put all that stuff together. I'd put my hand up here in his rump, stay nice and close, talk to him as I walk around. Well, horse, easy horse. You see old Maccabee there is not real concerned about me being around the backside. Of him. Okay? And these guys, they won't care. You guys are going to be fine walking around. I know it's scary, but things are only scary until you've done them a few times, and they're no big deal no more. Okay? Okay, you guys, let's go on to talking about the five things you guys need to do to get on your horse. Those five things are, uh, number one, get to know your horse. Number two, tighten up your cinch. Number three, climb up on your horse and figure out where your stirrups need to be. Number four, climb back down off your horse and adjust your stirrups. And number five, get back up there and hang tight, okay? But we're going to go through all that so you guys know how to do it, and then we'll go on from there. So here in a little bit, we're going to walk down through the back side of the horses. And I'm going to hand them out to you. Now, don't let me forget to tell you how to get the perfect horse, but I'll give you the perfect horse. <coughs> Once you get him, you can, I'm going to say something like, you got the first horse. The horse, if I can see this tag, I might say horse number four. I might say the horse with the blue blanket on top of the brown blanket. Whatever I say like that, I'll get you to your horse. You go up there and you start with step number one. And step number one is get to know your horse. So just get up here by him. Pet him, look him over, make sure you know what color he is in case you lose him on the trail. Just spend a little bit of time getting to where you feel comfortable being around him. They, are, they probably already feel comfortable being around you. They're around lots of kids. But you need to feel comfortable being around them. Get that done and then go on to step number two. And step number two is tighten up your cinch. This is pretty important <coughs> because that's, this keeps the saddle up here on the top side of your horse's back instead of down here on the bottom side of your horse's back. You guys all see the significance of that? Yeah, just a little okay. bit. Okay, now, this morning when we tightened up these cinches, we didn't tighten these up so that they were tight enough to ride. We just tightened them up tight enough that we could go on and do some other things. We wouldn't have to worry about them flipping their saddle underneath them. So it's now your responsibility to tighten this up so it's tight enough to ride. You want this cinch, this latigo here, to be tight like a bowstring's tight. Have you guys all had a chance to shoot a bow? Yes. There's never a time when you're shooting a bow that there's slack in your bowstring. That's what you want this to feel like. You want it to be tight. If you're like this tall or taller, you're going to pull on this until it quits coming easily. But if you're like this tall or shorter, you're going to pull on this as hard as you can. You won't be able to get it too tight. Okay? So watch this. I'm going to grab onto this top strap right here. Not this. That's just extra. I'm going to grab onto that top strap right here and I'll pull up on it. Now watch what happens. It's going to slide really easy. Right there, quit sliding easy. Okay, right at spot, if I put my hand in there, you see the difference in that now? Yeah. It's tight. There's no slack in there. Okay? Now, it's tight enough to ride, but if I don't get rid of this extra stuff, 
my horse is going to take a couple of steps and my cinch will be loose again. So I'm just going to work this through there like that, work that down there like that. <coughs> there it goes. Now if this is any longer than 8 inches, or really about any longer than that, I'm going to put it up here in this. This is called a latigo holder. This is called a latigo. This one's not quite long enough, so I just leave it. Okay? Any questions about step number two? Okay, step number three. Step number three is climb up on my horse and figure out where my stirrups need to be. Now step number three has quite a few things we got to make sure we know. So I'm going to help you with all those things here for a minute. The very first thing is, for the, the time you guys put your foot in the stirrup today until the time you hook your horse up at the end of the ride, it's your responsibility to have control of your horse. Okay? And the only way for you guys at the level of riders that you are at to have control of your horse is to have a hold of the reins. So before I ever put my foot in the stirrup, I'm going to grab onto my reins. And I'm going to hold on to those the whole rest of the day until I tie my horse up. So once I got a hold of my reins, now I can step back here a little bit. I mean, I can use the back, these saddle strings, you guys watching? These saddle strings, the back of the blankets or the back of the candle for balance, I'm gonna reach up, I'm gonna put my foot up in the stirrup here like this, okay? Okay, now next thing I wanna do is scoot right up here nice and close to my horse. I'm gonna reach around here and grab onto the back side of the candle. I'm gonna get ready to get on. Now, if I can't just miraculously leap up into the saddle, if I have to grab onto something to get me up there, the one thing I'm not going to do is grab onto the saddle horn. Because if I grab onto the saddle horn and climb up there, my saddle's going to get pulled over to the side. And then it's going to be uncomfortable for my horse the whole rest of the ride. It'd be like you guys getting up and getting ready to go to school in the morning and getting your underwear all pulled on nice and comfy, and then ranking them off to the side and wearing them like that the rest of the day. That wouldn't be very comfortable. You wouldn't want your horse to have to go through that. So what I want you to do is if you have to reach up there to grab onto something, I want you to grab onto the mane right here. Okay? Now they aren't like us. We're people and they're horses and they don't feel things the same way we do. This won't hurt them, but I'm going to grab onto that because it's going to help them out later for my saddle not getting off to the side. I'm going to grab onto that mane like that. Okay? That's what I'm going to use to pull myself up. Now, if I'm in, now when I get on, I'm going to bounce three times and I'm going to climb up there. Right. If you're having trouble, if you're having trouble getting on, you're not bouncing good enough. I'm going to go one, two, three, up, and now I get on. Okay? Easy. It's easy. If you have trouble getting on, check your bouncing out. <laughs> okay. Now, once I got up here, there's a number of different parts of step number three. First thing I got to do is figure out where my stirrups need to be. Now what I want to do is I want to sit on my horse like I'm in an athletic stance. You guys all know the athletic stance? Go ahead and show me. About uh, feet, about shoulder width apart. Crouch down a little bit. You can move any direction at any time. Okay, that's about where you'd want to be for this too. Feet, all your feet are flat on the ground, right? That's where I want to be, right here. That's where I'm at. Okay, there should be a straight line <coughs> between my heel, my hip, my shoulder and my ear, okay? I should be able to stand up. If I stand up here, I should be able to get somewhere between two and six inches between my seat and the seat of the saddle, okay? If you use your fist, most of your fists are about four inches. If you can get your fist between your seat and the seat of the saddle and you're flat-footed just like that, just like you're standing on the ground, that would be about right for the type of riding we're going to do today, okay? I need my little leg to have a nice easy bend right here and then drop almost straight down just like that. Somewhere between two to six inches. Okay, any questions about that? <coughs> okay, just so I know, how many, any of you guys planning on wanting to fall off today? Just one? There's always a couple in every group. You guys make sure I give you those kind of horses in later on. Okay, well here, any of you guys that don't want to fall off, I'm going to help you out a whole bunch right now. I'm going to teach you how not to fall off. You want to know that? Yeah. Okay, it's easy not to fall off. All you got to do is stay balanced. Okay? If at any time somebody yanked your horse out from under you, you should land standing on your feet. Okay? In the athletic stance. Okay? And that's important. Because that means that at all times when you're riding, there should be a straight line between your ear, your shoulder, your hip, and your heel. And that line needs to go straight up. 
So if you're riding up a hill, <clears throat> you're going to be leaning forward a little bit, right? It's going to seem like that. If you're riding down a hill, you're going to ride, lean backwards a little bit. Okay, but at all times, you're going to be going straight up and down. Here's something that happens. You know that some, everybody probably has somewhere in, someone in their life that says, don't slouch, sit up straight. Yeah. Anybody have that? Nope. Yep. Me too. This is a time to pay attention to that and to listen because that's how you don't fall off your horse is you sit up straight in your saddle. If you lean too far forward and your horse stops real fast, you're just going to fall off the front. And if you're leaning too far backwards and your horse takes a jump, you're just going to fall off the back. This is a great time for sitting up straight, being proud, being proud of who you are, and riding like that. Okay? Make sure that when you're riding, you're staying straight up and down balanced. Any questions about that half of balance? <clears throat> okay, there's another, that only keep you in the saddle half the time. The other balance is, is balance side to side. Okay, this is pretty important too. At all times when I'm riding, I should be able to look down my nose, down my chin, right down my, right down my buttons, out my saddle horn, right out my horse's mane. Okay, you need to look to where you want to go. And when I look down through my horse, I should see all that lined up. If I'm riding along and I look down and all I see is the ground, I know I'm about ready to fall off. You need to be looking down and seeing that line like that. And you need to be looking where you're going. If you look down, guess where you're going to go? Down. You're going to go down because that's the way your weight will take you. Okay? So you want to be sitting up straight, looking out like that. If you're riding along and you look out in front of you and you see the guy in front of you is kind of like riding like this, you want to tell him, hey, man, straighten up. You're about ready to fall off. Make sure that that guy's staying straight like that. You can help each other out. Okay? Any questions about balance? Okay, step number three. Uh, one was getting on my horse, step number two, tying to my cinch, step number three, climb on my horse and figure out where my stirrups need to be. Step number four is to climb back down off my horse and adjust my stirrups. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to grab onto the mane. I'm going to swing my leg over. I'm going to lower myself down just like that. Get right back down here like this. Now, adjusting the stirrups is easy. All you guys can do this. If I need my stirrups raised up, I'm going to unbuckle this and I'm going to move that up. And if I need my stirrups lowered down, I'm going to unbuckle this and lower it down. Now this is, this is when you would have to go to the other side of your horse because when you adjust this side, it doesn't automatically adjust the other side. You've got to go over there and do that. Okay? Okay? Hey, did any of you guys have any questions about adjusting your stirrups? <coughs> Step number five is when you got all that stuff done, just sit right there, hang tight, don't wiggle when everybody's ready to go. We will come by here, we will check out all the stuff, make sure you did good, make sure you're ready to go. We do a safety check and we turn you loose. And when we turn you loose, you guys are gonna ride right on over on that side of the barn over there. There'll be uh, wranglers out there to help you with horsemanship instruction. They'll get you helped out and off we'll go. Uh, you wanna know something you? cool? Maybe, maybe you guys will be on like some sort of like um, game show someday and you have to know this 15,000 pounds per square inch is what a horse or average horse's foot weighs when it's standing on your foot I don't know who figured that out or whatever but I know that to be true 15,000 pounds is what feel that feels like trivia a horse has stepped on your foot before? oh yeah all the time man you ought to see my feet they're like a mess no thanks it's okay. part of the thing. I used to have like model feet. I could have been a foot model. And I started being a cowboy and then it went all to kaput. So you know that camp that I was telling you about the, or the horses? Yeah. They, they told you the opposite. They told you to walk around the front. To get around them? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you would do that. Like for instance, when Kyle was with us last year on horse trek, we tie our horses to a rope right here. And then we don't teach people not to go around the front because it's perfectly acceptable because there's room to do that. There's not room to do that here. Yeah, this yeah. would be unsafe here. But we don't tell you don't ever go around the front when we do that because really there's not very many nevers with horses. There's like most of the times nots, but not always nevers. But here, 
This would be a place where you wouldn't want to walk around the front yeah, side. Yeah. It's too dangerous. Yeah. Hey, Scott, uh, when you're done holding the reins, I see you put it over the horn right there. Yeah. At the best spot, don't let it fall onto the ground or over his head. Yeah, but most of the time, well, for you guys, no, no, no. For you guys, when the few times when you guys are going to not hold your reins today, because you got to have a hold of your reins to have control of your horse, right? Remember I said that? If you don't, <coughs> the few times that you're not going to be a hold, holding them, you'll have to hold them because you're going to be leading your horse. The only time that you won't be holding them is when you climb off your horse at the end of the ride, and then you could put them like that. Yeah. <coughs> Rest of the time, you'll, you're going to hold on to them. Yep. Okay, you guys, any other questions about anything? Nope. Okay, the next thing we need to do then is go get helmets. Yes. No, how do you find your perfect mm. horse? Oh, oh, don't let me forget to tell you how to do that. And we will tell you that in a little bit, okay. teach you how to get the perfect horse. But before we do that, you guys got to go get helmets. And when you get back from there, Mr. Senior Patrol Leader, if you'd line everybody up out on the edge of the concrete, and uh, I'll use this area as a, as a little stage for teaching you what we got to do. This stuff I'm going to teach you next, you got to do on your own. Okay, and it's real important that you understand how to do it. There's a few things we got to learn about. First thing we're going to learn a little bit about is leading your horse. Everybody today is going to have a chance to lead your horse at least twice. Once at our break stop, when we're up here in the hills, and once when we get back here at the end of the ride, leading your horse on in. And it's pretty easy to lead your horse. First thing you want to do is grab onto your reins like 16 to 36 inches from the bit. With your right hand, your left hand's going to hold on to the extra stuff, okay? Then all you got to do is lead your horse. Now the word lead is in lead your horse is no different than the word lead in your scout troop or your school or in society, okay? It's just like that. The leader, who is me, I have a responsibility. I'm going to be out in front. I'm going to be pay atten paying attention to my follower. I'm going to make sure that uh, everything I do is to keep my followers safe. And I'm going to help my follower to be successful. Okay? Followers have responsibility. Followers need to stay behind the leader, pay attention, do what the leader says, and do everything he can to help the leader be successful. Okay? So if you practice that in your scout troop and in your school and in society, you're going to be successful at both those things. So the same thing I'm going to do with my horse is just like that. I'm going to be the leader. Horses are natural born followers, so they seek a strong leader. Somebody will step up and give them boundaries and be in control and go in front and teach them that the things are safe. But the only way they feel safe is to know that you're going to be a good leader. So they're always testing you. They're saying, I hope he's going to be a good leader today. I hope he's going to be a good leader right now. I hope he's going to be a good leader if I stop. I hope he's going to be a good leader if I go up beside him or pass him or step on him. It's your responsibility to be a good leader there. So, with all that said, if I'm going to lead my horse, I'm just going to come out here and walk. I'm going to expect my horse to stay behind me. I'm going to lead him. I'm going to make sure we go where we go is safe for him and that we can both be successful together. Okay? If he tests me and finds out that I'm not a very good leader, he might come past me. And if he does, it's no big deal as me, for me as a leader, I just have to reassert my leadership. So I just start over. It's no big deal that I, that I let him get up here. I just maybe do that, tell him to get back off there, see how he backed up a little bit. Or what I do is I just bring him around in a really nice tight circle, and then on the other side, I just come out in front, and I get him back, up, back there where he's supposed to be. Okay. You guys got any questions about leading your horse? Okay. Next thing then we have to know a little bit about, before I can teach you how to go, stop, and turn, <coughs> you have to understand this one simple little thing. You ready? This here horse ain't a toaster. Do you guys all understand what I mean when I say that? No. Yes. Nope. That's the right answer for that, because that's kind of a weird thing for somebody to say, right? You guys are all old enough to make your own toast, right? Yes. If you want a piece of toast, you go to the bread sack, get a piece of bread. You go to the toaster, you put the bread in there, you push the little thingy down, you wait a little while, and out pops toast. 
Or you go to your bedroom and it's dark, you flip on the light switch, the lights come on. You leave, you flip off the light switch, the lights go off. Maybe you want to watch TV, you find the remote control, push the power button, TV comes on, push the up arrow, channels go up, down the arrow, channels go down, right? That's the way most everything is in your modern day life. But that ain't any way the way a horse is. Horses are way more like me and like you and like the guy standing next to you. Horses all have different personalities. They all have good days and bad days. They all make decisions. Here's the most important thing for you to know about, about a horse and his personality is every time you ask your horse a question today, he's going to answer it in one of two ways. He's either going to say yes and do what you asked him to do, or he's going to say no and he's not going to ask answer. He's not going to do what you ask him to do. And it's your responsibility to ask him in such a way that he ends up saying yes and doing what you asked him to do. Okay? Any questions about toasters? <laughs> Yes, sir. What type of bread do I like to use in the toaster? Well, English muffins, bagels, really big, fluffy, wonder white bread. Those are all pretty good. So sometimes I take a tortilla shell, rip it in half, fold it again, put it in one side, put the other half in the other side and have a little toasted tortilla shell. But no matter what I do with a toaster, it always toasts my bread and kicks it back out. But that ain't the way horses are. So that's the thing you guys got to wrap your heads around, is that these are more, way more like us. They're all different. OK, any other questions about toasters? Okie doke, the next thing I'm going to do is climb up here on this horse. <coughs> I'm going to do the same thing I already told you guys to do. First thing I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do is grab onto the reins. Next thing I'm going to do is step back here, grab onto the saddle strings or the back of the blanket or the back here of the cannel. Now here's something I didn't tell you, but I am going to tell you now, is that it's you guys' responsibility. You, only, you can, you got to be able to mount your horse unassisted on flat ground to be able to ride out here with us. Now we be, we'll be there to assist you. We just can't pick you up and put you up there. So. You make sure you're paying attention to all the things I taught you, which was put your leg up there, get up close, grab onto the mane. The most important thing for you guys to remember, especially some of you guys that are old enough to have voted for Reagan, you want to bounce three times. Make sure the bounce is good. Bounce. Step up and step on. Okay? Okay. Any questions about any of that stuff? Okay, you guys, the most important thing about going, stopping, and turning is how you hold your reins. If you hold your reins properly, your horse will go, stop, and turn properly. But if you hold your reins incorrectly, your horse is not going to understand the language that we've already taught him, and he's not going to be able to do anything of those things you ask him. So the very first thing about holding your reins is you want to hold them in one hand. Okay, when little kids ride out here with us, we tell them just to hold it like an ice cream cone, like that. You guys are all old enough to understand that. You want to hold them in one hand. It doesn't matter to me whether you hold them in your left hand or your right hand, but here in a minute, your other hand's going to get another job. Horseback riding is interactive. There's never a time when you can be bored when you're riding, okay? Because you're always having to have relationship and communication with your horse. <coughs> so the first thing is, is I want to hold them in one hand. Next thing I got to do is make sure they're even. There needs to be just as much slack in this rein as there is in this rein. Now, the thing is about that is that um, this knot right here, that knot is not tied in there as a handhold. It is tied in there so if you drop your reins, they don't fall on the ground. <clears throat> but it is tied in there even. So if this here is even here, they're probably even down there. So that just help you out a little bit, okay? Next thing you got to do is you got to make sure your reins are both tight enough and loose enough. They need to be tight enough that when you pull back, they come tight before they hit your belly button. Well, loose enough, when you put your hand down, there's slack in there and your horse can go do the things you ask him to do. Go, turn, okay? Those kind of things. That's where this hand comes in. This is the adjusting hand. This hand makes sure that 
If your horse puts his head down on the ground, when he does, I give him a little rain like that. <coughs> when he picks his head back up, I take a little rain back away. If I'm riding my horse and he picks his head up because he gets like he's going faster, I need to adjust my rein, slide my hand down there. So when I pull back, they'll come tight before they hit my belly button. It's the only way for you guys to have any control is to hold on to your reins properly. We've taught them a language, and that language is very particular and very precise. They know about 10 words, okay? But if you don't tell, say the words properly, they're not going to understand them. It'd be like me wanting you to pass me the ketchup, but saying, can you pass me the mustard? You wouldn't be very successful. And I might get pretty frustrated with you because I think, man, that guy's not very smart. Well, you're really smart. You just don't know what I'm asking you because I'm using the wrong word, okay? So I want you guys to use the right words. Okay, any questions about holding your reins? Okay, the next thing you got to know about is four phases of friendly firmness. And that's how we get our horses to do anything that we ask them to do, whether it's going, stopping, or turning. <clears throat> First thing we're going to do is thank our horse to do what we want them to do. When we do that, it's all about us. Everything's our responsibility in that. Next thing we're going to do is ask. When you ask your horse, it means you're going to use the least pressure you would ever want to use. It'd be like the perfectly most best trained horse ever. The next thing is you would tell. Now you guys know the difference between asking and telling if you're maybe listening to your mom. Your mom asked you to do something. Then she tells you to do something. She moved up her pressure, right? You're going to do the same thing. You're going to tell. If you've, if you've asked your horse, told your horse, and he still didn't do it, third thing you're going to do is you're going to make your horse do something for you, whatever that's going to be. And I'll explain all that to you and show that to you as we get to teaching you how to go, stop, and turn. Think, ask, tell, make. Any questions on that? Okay. Next thing I'll do, then I'll just teach you guys how to get your horses to go. So if I want this horse, Maccabee, here to go, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think him to go, which means the first thing I'm going to do is quit asking him to stop. And I'm going to use some, I'm going to move life from my body down into my horse's body. Now, I was thinking, that's all I was doing. But he knew because I was thinking properly what I needed him to do, and he paid attention and did it. Now, if that didn't work for me, next thing I'd do is ask. When I ask, I'm just going to wrap my legs around his middle and squeeze. See how he moves out a little faster? I feel him moving more life. That's because I'm using more of a language for him. If he doesn't go when I do that, Next thing I'm going to do is tell. When I tell him, I'm just going to flop my legs. See how he moves faster even yet? I flop my legs and I up my pressure, okay? If that doesn't work, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make him do it. Now, when I make my horse do anything, it's, it's going from asking to making. Making's kind of a punishment thing, isn't it? You can see where that would be. I'm going to make that thing happen. I'm going to use enough pressure one time that my horse does what I need him to do. And if I'm going to make him go, I would use my heels and I would drive him down into my horse's ribs. I would kick him with a little force. And I'd say, okay, let's go, horse. And he'd step out and go like that. Okay? Now, here's something about some of that. Once I get my horse doing what I want him to do, you want to quit asking him, telling him, or making him. Because if you don't quit tell, asking him, telling him, or making him, if you just keep doing it, doing it, doing it pretty quick, they'll quit paying attention to you. Any of you guys have anybody in your life that nags you a little bit too much? Yeah, I know what you mean, man. Me too. I, well, I say I used to have people in my life that nag me too much. But guess what I figured out? I figured out how to be a horseman, and I figured out that if, if I did what they asked me to do, then they wouldn't have to tell me. And if they don't tell me, they usually don't nag me. So if you're having trouble with somebody in your life telling you over and over and over again and it sounds like maybe they're nagging you, you just got to do what they want you to do when they ask you. I bet it's your rooms that are too dirty. You just need to clean your room up when you know you're supposed to. Okay? Take your scout book to the, to the scout meeting. Make sure you get your scout master to sign things off. Put the dishes in the dishwasher so your mom don't have to. Haul the garbage out. Walk the dog. What else? Ride the horse. Do your homework. Ride the horse. Ride the horse. Yep. Okay. You got to ride your own horse. Okay. 
where were we at? We were at, oh, we were at going. Okay, here's, any questions about going? <coughs> Next thing is stopping then. I'm gonna get him to go. I thought him to go and he just went. Now that he's going, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna quit asking him to go. I'm gonna tighten up my stomach muscles. If he doesn't go when I think him to, if he doesn't stop when I think him to stop, I'm gonna pick up my hand, that's asking. Okay, next thing I would do if he didn't stop then is I would pull. He'll remember that that glass wall got put up in front of him that always gets put up when he doesn't stop when I pick up my hand. I'll tell him, pull, I pull on him and tell him. If I'm gonna make my horse stop, I'm gonna do what's called an emergency stop. You're, the guy down here that went to the dunes already told you about this a little bit today. You probably didn't hear him, but he said about stopping. Sometimes you have to reach down, grab on. You pull your horse over to the side and he'll go in a circle. And that circle will get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then when he stops, then you've got him stopped. Here's the thing, you guys won't have to do an emergency stop out here, okay? But the horse that, the horse that I already told you about, that is untrained, spoiled, or disobedient, those kind of horses, quite often, if they'll kick you, they'll also run off with you. And you have to be able to do an emergency stop on them. Now, sometimes when you do an emergency stop, you have to do an emergency stop because your horse ran off with you for a really important reason. Maybe he was trying to save you from something. Maybe a cougar or a bear. Maybe it, maybe it wasn't something he was trying to save you from. He just thought it was. Maybe like a plastic bag blew across in front of him he thought holy cow and he tried to save you from something if that's the case when you get him stopped just reach down and pet him he'll probably be fine right on he'll be fine with that but maybe he goes berserko freaks out goes running off if you can get one of those horses stopped when you get stopped climb off him take him back to where you got him from get some respect from him get him trained a little bit more and then take him back out there <clears throat> okay, any questions about stopping? Okay, I'm going to teach you guys two kinds of turning. First kind of turning is called neck reining, or neck reining, and that's thinking and asking. Second kind of turning is called direct reining or plow reining, and that's called, that will be a telling and making. So the first one is thinking. If I'm going to think my horse to go, first thing I want to do is look where I want to go. Okay? If I want to go to that gate, I'm gonna to look to that gate. I wanna to go to that gate, I'm gonna to look to that gate. My horse will tend, there he goes. He just sensed what I was doing and figured it out. If I wanna go that way, I look that way. If I wanna go that way, I look that way. Okay, they have a tendency to go where we're looking. You have a tendency to go where you're looking. So if you wanna go up, look up. If you wanna be down, I mean go down, look down. Look where you wanna go and go there. Okay, so that's thinking. Next thing, if that don't work, is asking. If I want to go, go to the left, I look to the left, I move my hand to the left. See my horse move to the left? If I want to go to the right, I look to the right, move my hand to the right. See how he goes to the right. Look to the left, look to the right. Okay? That's neck reining. They do a lot better once they're moving, just like driving a car with no power steering. Next thing it is, is is telling and making. And this is a lot like an emergency stop. Let's say I'm riding down the trail, my horse sees some green grass over there, but all my friends are going over here. <coughs> if I need to go over there and I go like this and he don't go, I'm just gonna reach down here and grab on, pull my horse over to the side. This is why horseback riding is interactive and there's never a time for you to be bored because you always have to be riding your horse. There's never a time when you can just sit up here. If I need to go to the right and he won't go, I reach down, grab on, direct him over there. Go to the left, reach down here, grab on, direct him over there. Okay? Here's two things you got to know. First thing is sometimes when I'm turning, I got to readjust. If I get something wrong or if my horse does too much or if I don't do enough, I got to readjust. Well, I'm going to ride to that archway. Look what happens. I give him a little bit of go. He's going. Now he's missing it, ain't he? He's back over here. I got to readjust. Now, right there, I'm going. I want to go over there. I would go over here. I didn't go far enough. I'm not making it. Oh, I went too far. I readjust. Now I can go right through there. Okay? That's that on that. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions about turning? Any questions about going, stopping, or turning before we go on? 
Okay, you guys are gonna have the rest of the day to practice that stuff. And the Wranglers that will be with you on the ride are there only for one reason. And that's to help you guys with what you don't know and give you instruction. So if you have any questions, just ask one of them. If you think you get really good at something and you wanna be better at it, ask them on the ride. That's what they're gonna be with us for. <coughs> okay, no other questions? Okie doke. How to get the perfect horse. The proper, I'm gonna ask you guys three different questions. The proper answer to those three different questions is this right here. I'm gonna say, who wants a nice, calm, easy going horse? If that's the kind of horse you want, you just raise your hand. Okay, I'm gonna say, who wants an in-between horse? If you want an in-between horse, you raise your hand. I'm gonna say, who wants a wilder horse? Now you guys notice that I said wilder and not wild. A wilder horse is just a little bit more durer than an in-between horse. But if that's the kind of horse you want, you raise your hand. Now something I gotta tell you, that might be obvious to some of you, but it might not be obvious to all of you. Every man, raise your hand if you're a man, has to ride his own horse. You pick the kind of horse you wanna ride, not the kind of horse somebody else wants you to ride. You're gonna ride that horse today and you're gonna be responsible for him. So, who wants a good horse? Okay, I'll let me put Maccabee up and we will hand out some horses.